What's up, everyone? We are back at Witty. We are now sitting down with Wendy Borman. Hello. Hi. It's great to be here. Thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank We're, you. Yeah. Mary Jane's the women of weed. Yeah. What's not to like, right? Yeah. Women, weed, weed. Like, there's so much to talk about. So much to love. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been doing this for a while, like 12 and a half years of experience doing directing and producing and um, filmmaking. Mm -hmm. And so then what was this uh, calling to women of weed? Well, it, it's actually pretty funny because I was not a cannabis user before I started the film. So I moved to Colorado in 2014, and that was right when the legalization for cannabis was being regulated um, for adult use or recreational use is what they sometimes call that. Um, and people were teasing me ahead of time, like, you're going to see a pot dispensary on every corner, like there's going to be a big cloud of pot smoke over Denver, you know, things like that. Um, and while that wasn't true, um, what I did start hearing was all of these amazing stories of women having success in the industry. And I was like, hmm, well, I'm curious, but, you know, I don't really have an access point to that as a storyteller yet. Well, in 2015, I finally heard the statistic that 36% of senior leadership in the cannabis industry was women. And when you compare that to the national average of 22%, there was something about cannabis that was attracting more female leadership. And at that point, I was curious enough to start talking to people. So mm -hmm. I actually interviewed a, a hundred people over the phone to just kind of wrap my head around this. Mm -hmm. And I realized that cannabis was an intersection of gender parity and social justice and environmental sustainability. And so those three core values had been present in all my other work. So I knew that even if I wasn't a cannabis user, I could help tell the story to elevate the women in the industry who were doing that work, right? Tell so, us about that intersectionality of those three and yeah, teach us about that. Yeah. Well, it, I view myself as an intersectional feminist, right? So anytime I have an opportunity to work on a project that brings multiple viewpoints together, um, my spidey senses as a filmmaker like go off and I'm like, ooh, let's do that. Like I'm curious, I have a lot of questions and we're bringing this together. I need to, I need to figure out more. Um, By the way, I heard this definition of feminism as women are human and should be treated as such. Yeah. And, and I it, was like, whoa, I think everyone can get behind that. And yeah. if you can't get behind that, I mean, that's pretty telling, <laughs> telling right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I really, I really feel like as women, you know, we, we may be siloed into these different things, right? Maybe you're a woman in cannabis, a woman in tech, or, you know, you're a white woman, or you're a woman of color, or you're this, or you're that, or you're a woman in the LGBTQ community, you know. Um, but we're actually the majority when we come out and support each other. You know, we're up, totally. we're 51, almost 52% of the population. And yet in film, we're 33% of speaking roles. Mm. And we have, you know, 12% of our directors mm -hmm. in big Hollywood movies are female. So here I am as a female director doing a story about women leading a new industry. Yeah. And we're able to talk about um, intersectional feminism that's focusing on, on, on opportunity, not oppression. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a mind-blowing thing for people. I mean, yeah. I... Because I, we're moving forward. Right, and yeah. we don't necessarily need to talk about all the terrible things that are happening to women. Like, yes, there's room for that, but if that's the only narrative we have, like, how can we really overcome that? How is that inspiring to attract more women to come into leadership positions? It's, it's not, right? Yeah, but it's super inspiring when young women get to watch Mary Janes, and then they're like, whoa, yeah. I can do it too. Yeah, and Gina Davis says, if you can see it, you can be it. You can see it, you can be it. And that's really what we tried to show. So, And if there's good mentorship, there's good social fabric that guides them. To, I, to exactly, and so if they can set, even if it's not, oh, I have this, went to the same school as this person, it's, oh, I have a similar background to her, or I, you know, I'm that body type or that ethnicity or represent that community and they're having success in it too. So I felt it was really important if I'm going to do this film about women in cannabis, what type of women am I going to show? So I tried to show a broad cross section. So we have 40 women from 10 different states 
and they're representing five different segments of the cannabis industry. And then within all of that, we have different ages, ethnicities, uh, religion, sexual orientation, body type, education level, you know, like we really um, tried to be strategic and analytical about who could be in this film to help tell the story. And mm -hmm. are we able to talk to all the little girls and all the little boys at home to say, I might be able to do that too when I grow up. Yeah. That's, I think that's, uh, well, let's unpack a couple things from that. Um, the first thing is that there's almost this strategic, like you said, uh, casting uh, of the people that want it, that you want to highlight because it enables everybody to see the opportunity mm -hmm. um, versus there only being a certain uh, per per right. person on there. Um, then that's that seems to be really important to to happen in the world moving forward is to have. Uh, Everybody that you can see it, you can be it. So mm -hmm. everybody should, um, who is seeing it can see somebody similar to them mm -hmm. so that they can be them. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's that. And then there's also the 40 different leaders, mm -hmm. 10 states. So un unpack this. Who are these people? Um, give us some really interesting examples of who they are. Um, and it's currently in private screenings. Yes, so we're wrapping up our film festival um, and conference tour, um, and we're like this close to being able to announce some distribution news. So yes. we're inviting everybody to follow us on social media and sign up for our newsletter so they get those announcements. At? And we're at maryjanesfilm.com. Sweet. And on social media, at maryjanesfilm, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Boom. So that's how we're going to let everybody know. Links in bio. Thank you. Yeah, yes. look. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so some of the women in the film, you know, are cannabis luminaries. You know, I call them my cannabis fairy godmothers. They're the old guard who have been doing this for decades, right? Um, but probably before it was even legal, right? They were involved as activists, activists to legalize it, this um, movement, and turn it into the industry that we know it is today, right? Um, some of the women I spoke to initially that really enlightened me to the point that I was able to start unpacking all of the dare generation, just say no stuff that I was brought up with. Um, they, they were uh, Betty Aldworth. She's the executive director of Students for Sensible Drug Policy. Mm. And I also spoke to Wanda James. She's, let's, let's unpack Betty quick. Okay. And then let's, yeah. So um, Betty was involved in the Colorado amendment to legalize marijuana. So, and Colorado was the first state to do this in the United States. You know, a couple hours later, Washington announced that they did it too, but Colorado was the first in this experiment. Um, and she was really able to show me how this idea of prohibition, if we say, no, nobody can use this to save the children, it actually makes it more dangerous because if kids are going to find it, it's not going to be legal. It's not going to be regulated. They're going into unsafe environments. Who knows what's involved in the product, you know? Yep. Um, and we, if we regulate it, cannabis like alcohol, if you want to purchase it, you have to go into a store. It's going to be tested. You have to show ID, you know, like all of these things. And so it's actually safer for children in our communities if we're regulating it as opposed to just keeping it back in the dark alleys, mm -hmm. right? Um, Wanda James was another wonderful woman to speak to. She was the first African-American to own a legal dispensary in the entire United States. And she and her husband had right, owned... in Colorado? Yeah, yeah, they were in Colorado. And they had owned restaurants. They'd have all these other businesses. But they really viewed it as an act of social justice to be people of color opening a legal dispensary. Because when you look at the arrest rates for marijuana possession, oh we know that use is the same across races and ethnicities, and yet people of color are 3.7 times more likely to be arrested for possession. 
and we look at our prison populations for you know yeah. nonviolent drug affections uh, offenses, and they're mainly people of color. So God, and, pe- anyone that's in jail or prison for marijuana needs to be out or, and, and and helped. And out, we're out. Yeah. we're working yeah. on it, but that's not actually been written into all of the laws, right? There may be an opportunity to expunge somebody's records. Um, but there hasn't been this mass release of prisoners saying, sorry, you were arrested and you've been sitting there for 20 or 40 years. Um, and now we've got a bunch of white people making billions of dollars off of what you were doing on the street corner. Yeah. Like we haven't moved past that yet. Um, but we need to get there. Yeah. So Wanda James was really able to show me the racist roots of the war on drugs. Yes. And, you know, as you start learning these things, even if you're doubting whether, you know, cannabis can help you or fit into your lifestyle, like if we can just fix these other things in in our communities, like why wouldn't we do it? Yes, you can make a bunch of money um, in tax revenue, but can't we also fix these other things? Yes, we can. So let's do it. Yep. Then with the example Wanda Mm -hmm. that you were just saying, that is uh, see it, be it for so many people. Yeah. I love yeah. that one. Okay, so um, the maybe let, let's unpack this in a little bit more detail because I'm sure you've been learning a lot about it. Um, you, you just, you just uh, showed us the tip of the iceberg right there. <laughs> so everything else that's below the surface that we don't typically see, let's talk about that. So besides the egregious amount of people that are put into jail and prison for for marijuana which is 800,000 times a year in the United States 800,000 times a year people go to jail or prison for per year yeah for cannabis that's oh, what the number was oh no yeah that's a lot of people that was me too I won't wow. yeah damn that's so much lost time and potential. That's like the worst part about it. There's just people losing their freedom and then lo- and now, like you said, then yeah. now it becomes super profitable for corporations that yep. are typically run by white men. Right. Yeah. And if you and if you have that on your record, you have to check it uh, on all of your job applications. You have to check that box. The you know I've been convicted of a felony on um, housing applications. I mean this. Uh, if you want to get your children back, if they've been taken away while you were incarcerated, yeah. like it just sets up these communities um, to have more and more obstacles to try to overcome this. And so this is why certain communities and even certain states have now written it into the legalization um, to expunge people's records. You know, that yeah. was part of um, Amendment 64 in California. It's slow going, but they're still trying to work on that. And it comes down to the local district attorney who, you know, is really, are they motivated or are they not motivated to do that? Um, But Massachusetts was really um, revolutionary. Um, Another woman in our film, Shalene Title, she helped draft the legalization to that went before the voters and it included a provision that said, if you've been convicted for marijuana, you may not be excluded Mm -hmm. from the cannabis industry. Mm -hmm. And no other state has done that before. Mm -hmm. You know, Colorado didn't do that. That wasn't part of their legalization. Mm -hmm. So if you've had a drug possession, you're barred from the industry, Mm -hmm. which I think is unfair, you you know. Because you have some valuable insights as well. Right, like you've been doing it for longer. Um, Why, number one, like, why would we bar anybody from this industry if they've got a good skill, right? But number two, like you were targeted most likely for this and you probably couldn't afford the big fancy lawyer to get out of it. So why are we prohibiting people of color and people from lower socioeconomic communities from entering this industry? So there's a lot of good that's coming out of the cannabis industry and then there's also all these other things we still need to fix. Yeah. And then, so what are some of the, maybe the action items that people are taking away from the film? Well, what's interesting is when I started the film, the statistic was 36% of senior leadership in cannabis was women. And by the time the film premiered at our first festival in the fall of 2017, 
it had dropped to 27. Hmm. And I think that's because in 2016, we had eight new states come on board, including Mm. California. Mm. And at that point, you've opened the floodgates for financing. Well, the other industry we saw built in our lifetime was the tech industry. And we've got this model that you take a couple guys in sweatshirts, you give them a computer in a garage, and they build the next app, or Mm -hmm. they build the next tech company, right? And so you've got funders who are used to that model and they're now looking at cannabis going, hmm, I'm gonna fund what I'm comfortable with. So I'm comfortable with white men <laughs> who probably have you know, a Harvard or a Yale MBA, right? And that's not necessarily the activists who helped uh, bring this industry forward, right? And typically people with an MBA have no experience in the cannabis industry. Right, so they might they n- might know how to pitch a business plan yeah, to like investors, yeah. right? Or they're really good at PowerPoint, <laughs> yeah. but they may not really understand the plant, or they may True. not understand the, the social justice side of yeah, things. Yeah, or the communities that you're gonna go into and sell, because yeah. normally um, if you're looking for a a place to open a dispensary, it's going to be in the lower income communities, right? And that's really loaded for cannabis businesses who to come into a community that has been targeted by the police. And there's like, but you know, we're in business suits now, it's okay to buy it from us. And that's a really tricky thing to navigate and not everybody's sensitive to that. So if they're not hiring and training, you know, the local community to then come in and then mentor them to work their way up, they're just profiting. Yeah, and also inspiring people to be creative through their cannabis use. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's something that we don't talk about enough is the consumptive side of cannabis versus the creative side of cannabis. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really important thing. Well, and it's interesting to be here in the tech um, women in tech summit, right? Because we have a lot of really smart, talented women and male allies who are here. um, And they've got a lot of great skills that could benefit uh, or the cannabis industry could benefit from. And yet there's still some stigma as to, ooh, do I really want to risk my professional reputation by coming into the cannabis industry? And I get that. Like, especially for women, you know, we still bear the brunt of a lot of the stigma. Um, And we have a lot of the consequences. You know, if a father is using cannabis, they're not necessarily going to have child protection services called on them. But if the mother uses cannabis, even for a medical, like a medical purpose, for an illness or something, CPS is called. Or that's actually happening. Yeah, still. That's really weird. We, we just have this expectation um, that that's different for the genders. Ah. Um, that, but it's interestingly enough, I think that um, s- s- sometimes it almost also enhances your connection to your child uh, well, in some cases. But I, I mean, we also have um, schools who've been calling the police because there are ch- our children who are being given CBD from their parents. You know, maybe it's for epilepsy totally. or autism or totally. ADHD or something like that, but they're like, you've endangered a child. I mean, give it in like a, uh, like a very, very small, like right. three milligram so, dose or something. And it really comes down to a lack of education. So there's a lot, lot of, of things we, yeah. we need to fix, right? Um, we also need to fix drug testing, you know, because uh-huh. people are still testing for whether you've used marijuana in a state where it's legal. And I say, are we testing for alcohol? alcohol. Are yeah. we testing for all these other Tobacco. hard drugs? Yeah. Um, you know, but they leave your system a lot faster than cannabis does. Um, yeah. So it, it's a, just a matter of time, I think, before there's a class action lawsuit from employees who are like, you shouldn't be up in my business. <laughs> you know, I can still have my job, whether it's a blue collar job or a white collar job, and I can still do that and go home and choose cannabis instead of alcohol or opioids. Yeah, yeah. And there's also the sort of hilarious uh, tech process, especially in the startup world, which is that like, if I'm trying to join your team, 
you'd be like, oh, cool, like, show me your skills. And I, like, show you my skills and stuff, whatever I'm doing. And then you're like, great, you have the skills. Welcome aboard, you know. And then it's there's not ever this stage of, like, make sure to fill in all of the bubbles about... It's like, no, you seem like a very great person. You can do your skills. That's what matters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yet we don't require that for the stock people, the drivers, you know, the pe- the people who are working at Walmart or Target or, you know, any of these other things. Yeah. You know, the, those minimum wage jobs are drug tested at a higher rate. Right. And at that point, you know, I I think that's racist. It's definitely classist. I would also venture that it's racist. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. So I wonder where, because I want to touch on what we just talked about with classism. Maybe, Maybe we should touch on that right now. Let's do it. Okay, so where else is this, both within cannabis as well as, well, you've mentioned a couple examples, but... We, we, I mean, we don't talk about this on the show enough, and we definitely should, but we talk about socioeconomic disparity a lot mm-hmm. on the show, and we mm-hmm. talk about the potential for wealth inequality of such severe extremes that, due to exponential technology, that, that we just have a class-based speciation. Um, now, maybe what are your thoughts a little bit on that, and where, what are some of these, like, solutions that we can provide? Like, you were describing some, like, you know, like, Get, get this um, uh, drug checking out of the, uh, out of the lowest mm-hmm. um, sort of minimum wage uh, mm-hmm. jobs. But at the same time, of course, you don't want to bring on people that are going to be like a straight up junkie on the job. So there's got to be some weird sort of like balance mm-hmm. of figuring mm-hmm. that out. Mm-hmm. What excites me the most about the cannabis industry is the opportunity to really tackle um, the gender wage gap and wealth inequality, right? Yeah, let's talk because about that. when women and people of color are able to build up wealth, you know, not all of us come from generational wealth, right? Yeah. Like other communities. And so if we're able to build wealth and pay ourselves well and pay people who look like us the same amount for the same work, that's a game changer yep. in our communities, in our families, in our politics, everything. So if we value ourselves um, and we value women in particular on paper as the same amount, you know, it's that idea of like a woman's a human. It's like, right, she's also earning the same amount as a man. No matter what the job is, they're paid the same. I mean, your influence in your family, in your community, um, you're able to donate to political action campaigns and candidates and like all these other things like we become bigger influencers and that's a game changer in the United States and it is in the world you know um the two opportunities I see and hear from women as to why they're coming to cannabis um the first one is they are able to be the CEO of the company and create the corporate culture that they want, Mm. right? So they don't have to be the senior vice president of something and have all these dudes that they've trained get promoted over them, right? They get to be the CEO and they get to hire who they want to work with. And what we see is that when women and people of color start companies, they hire more women, they hire more people of color, they hire more veterans, they hire more people from the LGBTQ community. And it's because we intuitively know that if we have diverse perspectives, we're set up for success. You know, if everybody looks the same and thinks the same, you're not gonna see the obstacle coming at you, (laughs) right? Um, So diversity, diversity leads to greater success. And this is true in cannabis, Fortune 500 companies, film sets, everything. The second thing that I see women um, do in cannabis is they're able to create products that fit into their lifestyle. You know, women are not interested in the tallest bong ever built, nor are they interested in the most THC, so they're stuck on the couch for a week, right? Like, and I've actually been at filming at conferences where a man said, women are going to be what saves this industry. Because if it wasn't for their presence, we would just have this stoner dude image still. 
And instead, what we're seeing is, you know, smaller products, more discreet products, something that's going to fit into your, your lifestyle. You know, there's cannabis that you can drop into a cup of tea. Nobody needs to know what you're doing and you're already having a cup of tea, right? Or they're creating the odor blocking technology for purses. So you can go pick up your kids or have a meeting in the boardroom or with the principal and nobody's going to know what's in your bag, you know? They're creating all of these different things um, because nobody else was going to do it for them. And I will say that the, the great opportunity I see in cannabis is we can really fix, you know, these larger conversations about gender parity. You know, women wrote the original computer programs that built the tech industry. And we saw that happen in our lifetime, and women are now down to 26% of the tech industry. So women are now at the forefront of the next great industry that we're building in our lifetime, cannabis, and we need to make sure the same thing doesn't happen. But we've already dropped down to 27%. So I try to encourage people at the film screenings, you know, the call to action has become a lot stronger since the film has come out. It's not necessarily just look at all the great things women are doing. It's now almost a recruitment tool of like, we need you to come in and join us, right? Um, and I've heard this great saying that whatever you did outside of cannabis, you can do inside of cannabis. You just add in cannabis. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the old fortune cookie trick, right? Mm -hmm. So you, if you're an event programmer, you're an event programmer in cannabis. If you're a filmmaker, you're a filmmaker in cannabis. If you're a coder or a programmer or you run a lab, you know, like just add in cannabis and that's how you come in. Like there's not this glass ceiling or even the grass ceiling, right? Mm. You can, if whatever you want to do, you come on in, there's room for you. And all the creativity and innovation that's coming from that. I know. You said the odor blocking purses and the, um, the small little more discreet ways to, mm -hmm. to use mm -hmm. cannabis. Um, the, the, the grass ceiling, that's the first time <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> They're, we're full of puns in yeah. the cannabis oh, community. Oh, I just yeah. recently learned the tell them hi from me and H I G H yeah. instead. That's so funny. You guys have tons of puns. So that this is really that was a good list of things that you're really excited about, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you've learned a ton from making this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't start out as a, a cannabis activist, um, but I by the end of the film, I've actually become an advocate. Yeah, it's an it's an advocate. It's, it's it's. I wonder if if you're right about um, the female um, feminine energy coming into the equation and catalyzing less of the stoner dude culture. Because really, the stoner dude culture is kind of a culture that I'm also a little bit like. It's yeah. alienating, you know, like I and think that's not productive either. It's like society wants more creative people that are building cool things and building cool futures. And mm -hmm. I mean, if we're just using cannabis as an escape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. like it. Yeah. It, I mean, I, I just think I had ample opportunity to try cannabis in my youth. Right. And I never did because I was like, why would I do that? The only people I knew who did that, you know, were the stoner dudes in school, right? You know, and I, I admit that I was judgy in the past because I was like, I have sh a bunch of shit to do. Sorry, or I have a bunch of stuff to you do. <laughs> I don't know if program. I can swear on your you show. Can totally swear. <laughs> okay, of stuff. I've been bleeped before, so yeah. I'm trying to keep reining it in. Um, so, you know, I had enough to do, and I never really knew whether it was safe or not. So I never saw myself represented. Um, in the community so i was just kind of it was off-putting by what i saw um and now that i am able to see women in the industry and the products that they're creating you know by the end of the film i actually tried cannabis for the first time ever and that's in the movie um and it's actually a really fun scene everybody <laughs> really enjoys it and we have a little really lively q a after all the film screenings 
What did you do? Did you take a photo? <laughs> I don't want to give away. I don't want to give it. You got to see the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully coming into a distribution channel near you. Right, right. Yeah, yeah definitely follow us on social and yeah. find us on our website. That's how we're going to announce things. But, I mean, I took the opportunity to flip the script. You know, I, I had heard from a lot of women that the first time that they tried cannabis, somebody passed them something at a party or maybe their boyfriend purchased it, or there was a lot of peer pressure in the situation, and mm -hmm. you know it wasn't a very consensual or empowering thing. So I figured if I was going to do this, you know, in my late 30s, let's change the situation. So I went into a female and minority-owned dispensary. I spoke to a female bud tender. I explained the situation. Um, and the experience that I wanted, and they really helped guide what product that I, I picked. And then I put a group of cannabis fairy godmothers together who, you know, they were the experts, they've been doing this for years, um, just so I had the, those, um, like those spirit guides, right? Um, to really bring me into the community. And it was a fun, empowering, you know, amazing experience. And I would just love, you know, other people who've been curious, but maybe they're not quite sure, you know, to, I, to just take that step to have the conversation. You know, whether it's take your family member who's been suffering from arthritis into the dispensary and see what kind of product they could find. Or have that conversation um, with a friend or a family member or spouse about, how can we use cannabis to get off all these other pharmaceuticals that we know are having bad side effects? Um, and for other women, you know, I would encourage them to just go in and figure out as a health and wellness product, how can this fit into our lifestyle? You know, you don't have to get stoned to use cannabis. Absolutely not. There, I mean, it's I, actually great to just do a little tiny bit. Well, and what I do every day. It's I, like microdosing. Right, too, right. I mean, and, and that works for a lot of people. I mean, I am now a daily cannabis user, but the way it fits into my lifestyle is I put topicals on my neck and shoulders because I've got some old injuries. Mm -hmm. I put hemp hearts on my yogurt in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not puffing on a vape every day because that doesn't fit into my lifestyle, right? Yeah. But though I get the benefits of the cannabinoids by doing those small things. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe on a Friday or a Saturday night, I might take like 2.5 milligrams of an edible, so usually like a quarter of something, mm -hmm. or I might take a little puff on, on a vape. But I don't get to the point where I feel like I'm out of control. I What I f notice is like the tension from the week just kind so of like slips off my shoulders. And it I'm like, okay, does. now I feel like I'm in a hammock mm -hmm. in the Caribbean, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Happy Friday, mm -hmm. you know? And that's what fits into my lifestyle. But I also know that I am privileged because I don't have any children, so they're not gonna get taken away from me. I don't have a job where I'm going to be drug tested. You know, I'm my own boss. I don't live anywhere that is going to prohibit me from using cannabis. You know, I'm not in public housing or things like that. So it, I'm hopefully using my position of privilege to help have the these other conversations that we need to have, you know. And several Likewise. states, we've legalized, yeah. right? So we may not be putting people in jail for using it anymore, but there's still all these other things we have to fix. Man, just the sheer amount of information that you've been teaching so far has just been so <laughs> interesting. And then, then just, Thank you. Then, you know, I know like 1% about everything that you're talking about. And that, that's, that, that speaks like to me, wow, why do I not know more about mm -hmm. this? It's, this? it's the stigma, right? Like people haven't, come out of the green closet yet you know um, i think yeah. it's happening the more the closet, more and more another one of those yeah That's when those funny. puns we yeah. have yeah. um but i mean it's when true. i parents don't want to hear you say it um in many cases um you your know, co-workers definitely i had yeah. people unfriend me on linkedin when i announced that i was going to do this film because they didn't want to be professionally associated with somebody who would do a film about cannabis and i was like 
all right, we'll see how long it takes before you come back. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now, you know, three years later, it's like, oh, who's, <laughs> who's having a, yeah. a successful ride of a film? You know, yeah. do you want to come back? And I'm like, hmm, I don't really remember you. You know, <laughs> who are you? I don't recall. <laughs> Yeah, it's a huge change in philosophy and culture. Um, it's also all the things that you were teaching are, you know, the gender disparity and also the social justice side of things. It's just so mind expanding to be able to learn about it and really figure out kind of what's next for figuring out how to just make a tighter knit social fabric. Um, mm -hmm. And I think we're, we're on our way with things like the Women in Tech Summit, mm -hmm. um, as well as what you're producing with Mary Jane. Thank you. Now, maybe we ask you a question about, you know, we've talked about this a little bit, but let's ask you more directly. What is a good way to maximize the potential of women as well as uh, young women in the world? Stop underestimating us. Yeah. I mean, that happens all the time, yeah. just based on your gender. I mean, it happens before you even meet people sometimes based on your name. You know, like, what's the name on the resume that comes through the desk? you know, or the signature at the bottom of an email. It doesn't matter what I'm saying, but based on my name, they're like, hmm, that's probably a female gender. Eh. Mm -hmm. um, at this point in my career, I find it amusing when people less underestimate me. I was like, <laughs> you're going to be really surprised when you find out <laughs> what I'm capable of, right? But it, it was really, it's really frustrating, you know, and uh, fundraising for films, I've even had to prove why it was important to do a film about women in cannabis. You know, I had a female funder ask me, why do a film about women? And I was like, we're 50% of the population, we're 33% of speaking roles in films, and they're leading this new industry, why wouldn't I do a film about women? She obviously didn't fund the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to have, you know, uh, massage my answer a little bit so I wasn't so snarky. Um, but I'm just proving that we were worth it, right? Stop underestimating. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other thing I would encourage women to do is one of the most courageous things we can do is tell our stories. Yeah. Because... We can also get men to be vulnerable and tell their stories too. Well... Uh, I'll take it a step further because history loves to write out the women, the people of color, and the LGBTQ community and say, nope, just the straight white cisgendered men did all of this. And it's like, you didn't do it in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. You know, we were yeah. here too. Totally. And we, so if this film really became important to document history as it was happening, and to show these are just a fraction of the women who are involved in building a socially responsible cannabis industry. You know, and we didn't have a word for it when we started. So there's all these cute words to talk about women in, in cannabis, like ganja girls and like green goddesses and you know, like all these other things. And it's like, that doesn't work, do their work justice, I think. So we Mary have- Jane's is yeah. It's it's pretty good, yeah. but we ended up creating the word puffragette. Yeah, puffragette. So it's pot plus suffragette. And we define a puffragette as a woman or a man who's building gender parity, social justice, and environmental sustainability into the cannabis industry. Heck yes. Puffer so we created a word and we created a logo. So And we've you know trademarked both of them so we can help carry this forward. Um, and it's been really exciting to see women and men at film screenings go, I'm a puffer jet, I'm a puffer jet. Afterwards, mm. it's like, great, everyone can be one. Come on in. Yeah. Here we go into the future, into, right? this, into this puffer jet culture. Yeah, like it. it's the puffer jet movement. Yeah, and thank you for, for embarking on it. This is huge. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for taking this major risk um, and also this, um, this tougher... Uh, it's a tougher field to enter into. It's mm -hmm. not one that's more safe. You, like you said, people unfriended you. Mm -hmm. um, it was more difficult to raise money. Mm -hmm. um, but you're you're embarking on at the edge, and mm -hmm. the edge is amazing. Um, Thanks. You're welcome. I've I've never shied away from you know tackling tough topics, but um, they've been about you know elephants in Thailand or dyslexia or you know these other things that people were. It was more palatable for. Yeah communities or film festivals, right? Like, yeah. they're, not everybody's ready to talk about cannabis in their community yet. But when they are, 
the conversation just grows. Mary Janes will be at the forefront of the of the films that are then introduced to them. Uh, I hope. Then, yeah. I hope so. So, how about we ask you a couple um, of the quick I, questions I on can the way do out? Like one more. Okay, well, I got to get do, to the train. Let's do <laughs> let's do speed round then. Okay, okay, speed round. All right. What is the most beautiful thing in the world? A woman stepping into her power and finding her voice. Yeah. Heck yes. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Heck yes. Okay. And then do you think we're alone in the cosmos? I don't think we could be. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I think we're screwing up this planet enough that other people are watching and being or other beings are watching and going like we're not going to go there and touch that yet. <laughs> and then what about, do you think we're in a simulation? Well, the singularity is near if it's not already here, right? <laughs> so um, I think it's entirely possible. Um, I do like the idea of, you know, um, the, the Buddhist idea of we're all just dreaming the same dream and we need to wake up. So I kind of take that tact more than yeah. than the simulations but it's anything's possible wendy thank you so much thank you this has been such a pleasure Greatly Same. appreciate it um really looking forward to seeing mary jane really looking forward to seeing it out in theaters we'll have a link in the bio as Perfect. well distribution channels um, as well as social links below. Uh, if you guys had a good time, make sure to go share the content with other people. Go and talk about it. Give us a subscribe and a comment below with your thoughts. Um, also, uh, do go create something with this. Go and have more conversations about women, about women in cannabis, um, and about the importance of social justice mm -hmm. um, and gender disparity and gender parity. Um, and then um, also join us on Patreon. Help us out. Help us get this content out to more people and do more cool productions at places like the Women in Tech Summit. So thanks everyone for tuning in and we'll talk to you soon. Peace.